Hi everyone, welcome to my video on CoinOps Collections and it's how to change out the default emulator for Dolphin from RetroArch to uh, the, the regular Dolphin <coughs> external emulator. So, um, so yeah, I'm pretty much doing this because I did it for myself and it worked really well. Um, I'm running CoinOps Collections on a on a s small form factor PC with the with onboard Intel graphics, which you know, runs most stuff fine. Uh, but I found with Dolphin it was really slow and uh, re really jittery. And, and laggy um, and it's basically down to using the uh, RetroArch core. I found that if I manually downloaded the you know, regular version of Dolphin for Windows, ran it in there, it ran pretty smooth. So um, I've actually did a little bit of work to um, reconfigure CoinOps to use the normal Dolphin um, and yeah it ran really well. So this is this is how I'm gonna so I'm gonna do it and show you how to do it yourselves if, if you have you know in the same situation yourself. So uh, it's basically it's quite straightforward. Um, so here's my CoinOps collection on, on my USB drive, my D drive. Um, if you go into emulators, and um, this is where all the emulators are stored up, you see I've got this Dolphin 64 folder here already. So what I've done is, like I say, by default it uses RetroArch and RetroArch Core. But what you can do is uh, download Dolphin, so dolphin-mu.org. You've got Dolphin for Windows here. <coughs> Just come in here. Um, the version to get is the beta version. It, it's, it's a beta version, but it's it's basically updated once a month, so it's it's kind of I guess it's their stable version if you like. There is uh, these development versions which are basically updated, you know, a couple of times a day if not more, which you, you can you can try that. But I, I tend to stick to the to these beta versions that are updated monthly. They tend to be more more stable. So also they got them for Android and Mac etc. So um, for me or I hope, you know, for most of you, Windows 64 bit. And download this. Um, like I said, I've already done it, but I'll, I'll just go through the, uh, through the steps so you can see. So we we'll download the, uh, the zip file. It's in a seven zip format, as you see. Give that a second to finish. Right, so now open the file. Right, just going to view. Sorry, there we go. So inside here we've got the Dolphin 64 folder. So what I'll do, like I say, I, I, I do already have it. But I'll just extract it out so you can see it. Uh, and like this, I'll just drag it to the desktop. And then close that. So, right, so here we are, the Dolphin 64 folder with uh, there we go, with Dolphin inside it. So what I do is I just so what you would normally do is obviously this wouldn't be here. <clears throat> this is where I've already put it across. So just basically grab this folder, drag it into emulators folder. Um, I won't do that because, like I say, I've already got it. Uh, so I'm just get rid of that for now. So basically, yeah, you, you end up with the Dolphin 64 folder inside your CoinOps Emulators folder. First thing you want to do is go in here and create the supportable.txt. Okay, this this is literally just an empty text file. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do is I will delete that and just show you basically. So just just right click in here, say new text document, and literally call it portable.txt. Uh, and all this does is it tells Dolphin when it runs to run in, in portable mode. So basically, all the settings, uh, cached files, all that kind of stuff, all stay within this folder here. And it creates this user folder to store everything. So all your settings and cache and um, any artwork, all that kind of stuff, and it that it creates per user goes in there. Because uh, <clears throat> if you don't do that by default, it will create it with inside your Windows profile, which is obviously in a, on the C drive somewhere normally. Um, and obviously the whole idea of CoinOps is that it's all self-contained, it's all in the CoinOps folder, you can basically put it on an external drive and, and move it to wherever you want, so we want, want to keep this the same. <coughs> so like I say, that's the first thing to do, uh, just uh, create that portal.txt. So yeah, create that portal.txt to run it in portal mode, then run your dolphin.exe. As you can see, I've already added my games folders in. Um, I don't think you have to do this for it to work, but if you want to and you want to run it you know, manually, if you want to you know, try stuff out, um, just go to the config, go to paths, and add in the, the CoinOps folders. So you can see that all, all, all the games within CoinOps are held under this the collections folder, and then there's one for GameCube, one, one for, for Wii. There's this sub menu one. Well, I'm not sure whether you need that or not. I don't think it's got any ROMs in it, but I've added it just, just for completeness. Um, so as soon as you add those, that's when it will then scan in the games and they'll appear in your list. Um, so yeah, like I say, first thing to do is set up your controller. Obviously all this you only have to do once. 
once it's done, you don't need to touch it again. But basically, you go into controller settings, control import one, click configure. I've got mine set up already for the, for the Xbox One controller via Bluetooth on my PC. Disconnect at the moment, but all you would do is pick your controller from there and then literally click here and then press the A button on your controller, click here, press the B button. Just work your way through these. D pad is here. These are the left stick and right stick. Um, the, yeah, so yeah, move up, down, left, right. Uh, the modifier is when you actually click the stick in. That's that button. And then over here, you've got um, left and right bumper and left and right uh, triggers. So once you've set that up, click close and you're, you're done. Don't need to touch that again. Uh, and then the next bit is under graphics. Um, but it, this kind of depends on what system you've got. Um, for me, on here I've got an AMD card, so I've, I picked Vulkan, that works quite well. On my other PC, which is just using the onboard Intel graphics, it actually runs a lot better using OpenGL. Um, uh, but the beauty is because we've got this here, we can actually just test it and see which, which runs better. So, like I say, for me, I use Vulkan. Um, important to tick the full screen box. Um, otherwise it'll run in a tiny little window and you don't want that so make sure that's ticked uh, on mine vsync i had to turn off because with vsync on it slowed down quite a bit uh, especially vsync actually uh, prevents the kind of the tearing of the picture that you occasionally get um, so I, I basically live with it because basically it performs much better without it so but it's kind of up to you basically a bit of trial and error to find out what's best for you uh, the other, only other thing i pick down here is make sure that the um, the shaders are uh, on default and I tick this box here to compile them before you start. You can leave it unticked but you'll find that when you load a game and uh, level for the first time it will create the shaders dynamically as it goes and you can get a bit slow down when that happens so I tend to tick this box so it, it, it pre-compiles the shaders before it starts the game. You get slight delay uh, when it does it, it doesn't take very long uh, but I'll see that and does it once um, so yeah I'd advise ticking that and then the other tabs in here you can play around with these if you want to, um, but I tend to leave them as default. I mean, you can you can upscale and change resolution, all that kind of stuff. So, um, which is great, I guess you're on a higher end system. But the whole reason that I'm changing this um, from the um, RetroArch Core Dolphin emulator because I was on kind of like I guess mid-range hardware and it was struggling a bit, but runs a lot better with the, the Dolphin than RetroArch. So anyway, that's that's it for the graphics settings. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I think in config, like I say, I did the uh, bits and pieces in there, um, the paths. Uh, the other thing was, uh, I think all this can stay the same. I think it's under interface. Um, the confirm on stop, make sure that's unticked. So basically, because we want to exit out of the game when we're finished and go back into the coin ops menu, in the front end. So you want to make sure that bit is unticked. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you can probably copy if you want to <laughs> what I've got on screen here, but. That's you know, the important one, make sure that uh, confirm on stop is unticked, otherwise you'll get a Windows pop-up saying, are you sure you want to quit? And obviously you, hit, you probably have no way of clicking on it, which will, you know, you get stuck, so. Yeah, so that's that bit. Uh, the only last bit is under options and hotkeys. Uh, if you use CoinOps already, you'll know that when you're playing a game, if you want to quit the emulator and quit back to the front end, you by default hit back and start on your controller, um, by default. So. We want to set the same in here so again make sure you've got your the control you're using picked in the list click on the exit uh, box here and hit back and start on your control at the same time and it'll end up looking like this uh, and then you can click close that basically means like i say <clears throat> when you're playing the game when you're finished you got bored hit start and back on your controller together and you'll be returned out of the emulator back into the coin ops front end um so that's pretty much it that's so that's dolphin set up um so like I said, that's a one-off task once you've done that you should need to come in here again uh, the only other good thing about having having this copy is you can you can update it yourself and quite easily or automatic well hey automatically but you come in here click on check for updates also i've got the latest version if you didn't you'd have a message saying there's an update available click update now it'll download the files for you and i think it'll even close and restart dolphin and you'll have the latest version so you can, quite easy to set up for that make sure you've got the latest version and best performance. So yeah, that's it for Dolphin, so you can close that now. The only other thing we need to change now is is basically tell CoinOps to open up Dolphin rather than open up uh, RetroArch. So in the root of your folder, you'll have uh, launchers.windows, and these are all configuration files which tells it how to launch games and emulators for different systems. So 
like I say, you can for Dolphin, you can use it for GameCube and Wii. Uh, for me, GameCube ran fine using the DirectorWatch Core, so I'm not going to touch that. You know, it's not broke, but it fix it. But like I say, Wii, the Wii games are the ones that had the issue. So you come down here, you've got Wii.com. So I'm going to open this. Just you know, in, in normal Notepad is fine. I tend to use Notepad++ because it just works really well. Um, so you see here, this is quite a simple file. Uh, the executable, or the emulator to run, is in the emulators folder, retroarch, retroarch.exe. Uh, and then when you run that exe, these are the arguments to put after it. So there's minus L to load the Dolphin core, as you see here. And then item underscore file path is basically, that's a parameter which will point to whichever game you've picked. Um, so it'll run the, you know, if I was doing uh, Mario Kart Wii, it will basically run the Mario Kart Wii ISO or yeah, disk image. Um, so what we're going to do is change this. So rather than using RetroArch to use Dolphin 64. So I've already done it. So if I close this, uh, you see I've got Wii hyphen new. So I open up this. So let's see. If I actually open up side by side, you'll see. I'm not, it's quite easy, but uh, I don't know. Can you for the view? This is what I like about Notepad Plus Plus. The little feature. So you can see we've got the new one on the left hand side. We've basically changed it. If it's still in the same same folder. The emulator folder, but now we've got a folder called Dolphin64, Dolphin.exe. We use the retroarch, and then for arguments, you need this this minus B and minus E, if you're running it from the command line. Um, uh, and then again, saying the item file path is, is the same. It's the path to the the game or the ROM that you pick. So that's that's as easy as it is. So if I just close this for now, um, there's my new one. So if I just, when I, mean, I keep it just in case. If I call that Wii Old, and then we'll rename this just to Wii.com, like that. So now, when you run, when you run up CoinOps, um, I won't do it on here at the moment. Um, I'm not sure how well the recording will work, but basically, once you run run CoinOps front end now, browse to your Wii games, pick a game, it will now launch Dolphin 64 rather than RetroArch. And like I say, for me, um, it just running the RetroArch court. It's just a bit laggy and you know, jittery. It wasn't running smooth at all. So I, I put it over the Dolphin and on that it, it runs really well. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, hopefully that made sense and you followed it okay. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully it's, it's useful. Uh, enjoy. I'm probably going to make a few more videos on, on coin ops. Um, I think everyone probably knows I'm, you know, I use, I'm a big fan of Retro, uh, RetroX. Um, I use that. Primarily for my, for my gaming, retro gaming, um, on my Nvidia Shield and my phone. Um, but at, at, at the current time, that is Android only. I've also got an arcade cabinet that I built. So um, at the moment, that's running an old Raspberry Pi. Uh, but I'm looking to replace it with a small factor PC, which is why I'm looking at coin ops. Um, so yeah, I'll probably be, you know, can use this in my arcade cabinet. Um, so yeah, I'm hopefully going to make some more videos on coin ops. Um, there's a few other bits and you know, tweaks I've done. Like I say, obviously the Cornox collection itself is kind of, you know, it comes fully working, fully loaded. You shouldn't need to muck about with it like I am. And it does work. Um, but yeah, you, obviously you can tweak it if you want. But obviously just um, just be aware, you know, at the moment, if you want support, you go to their Discord server and the various channels for different builds and you, and you get support. If you tweaked it or played around with it or, you know, added your own packs in or, you know, unofficial packs, um, then you don't get their, their support for it. There are there's a separate channel in Discord for people that have modded it, so there is you know a big community there that will help you out. I'm not, not saying you won't get any support, but you won't get the official support from them if you've uh, if you played around with the uh, with the collection. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Uh, like I said, I'll make a few more videos. Please subscribe, please like the video, and um, yeah, see you on the next one.